is another trailer that has people split. Some people love it because of the clever editing and beautiful music, and some people hate it for potentially misleading consumers. In short, the trailer is soft and poetic, and the game is loud and offensive. The trailer definitely raised awareness for the game, and I don't think Dead Island would have sold as many copies without it. Is it a good trailer? I think so, but regardless of what kind of trailer you want to put together for your game, you have to remember this lesson. Sell the game you're making. A trailer can be like a clean slate. After working with the same game for months or years, it's rewarding to step away from the project and condense it into a two or three minute pitch. In this moment, it can be tempting to put the advertising ahead of the game itself. Sometimes, if the trailer is cool enough, people will buy the game without giving it much thought. Dead Island's GDC trailer was really, really cool. It stayed in our heads for six months until we finally visited the fictional paradise of Benoit and discovered the game was maybe not what we expected. Dead Island was originally announced on August 8, 2007, about three and a half years before the GDC trailer. A brief gameplay video debuted at the games convention in Leipzig, Germany that year, along with a technical demo of Polish developer Techland's multi-layer damage system. The very first trailer for Dead Island was a bit goofy, abruptly juxtaposing the lush greenery of Benoit with the voraciousness of zombie bloodlust. So while most people didn't discover the game until 2011, Dead Island was supposed to be released in 2008, and it stayed on the collective radar of many zombie shooter fans. The GDC trailer was not produced by Techland, but by Scottish CG studio Axis Animation, who also assembled the trailer for Techland's newest game, Dying Light. The cinematic short was directed by Stuart Aitken. Axis took concept art drawn by Techland and created the 3D environments and characters. From script writing to frame rendering, the process took five to six months. The trailer's tone was no accident. Techland felt a desire to shake things up with this trailer and create something people would be talking about. Axis focused on a few standout elements like the contrast between the serene paradise and the ferocious flesh eaters and the immediate terror of being thrown into a life or death situation. To tug at people's emotional arteries, Axis decided to play the scene backwards and forwards at the same time, showing us the last moment first and the first moment shortly after. With the reverse footage played in silence and the forward footage in short bursts, we travel toward the midway point, the moment when the father discovers his daughter in the hallway and tries to rush her injured body to safety. The strange comfort we feel in seeing this gory scene undo itself is shaken by blips of the past, reminding us how it all ultimately plays out. Both Techland and Axis have spent the last two years explaining what they were trying to achieve with this trailer, but whatever it was, it worked. The GDC trailer was downloaded by millions within a matter of days, and the game has presently sold over 5 million copies. Lionsgate was soon in talks to co-produce a feature film, not on Dead Island the game, but Dead Island the trailer. It won top honors in the internet film category, not trailer, but film, at the 2011 Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity. We at GT stated it was the best trailer of 2011, and the fifth best trailer ever made. We also labeled it the third most misleading trailer ever made. When Dead Island launched and people realized the game was set to the opposite pace of this incredible trailer, many of the award-winning short film's biggest fans became its harshest critics. What is it, specifically, about this trailer that is so deceptive? One could argue that the scene is absolutely reflective of playing Dead Island, and many of the trailer's elements were recreated in the final game. In Dead Island's prologue, the player wakes up in a room at the Royal Palms Resort Hotel, no matter which of the four characters they've chosen. Immediately to the left of the player's room, in the opposite direction from where the game is leading them, is the hotel room of our decaying vacationers. The girl is gone, but the mother and father are arranged together. The player has to run away from the room to begin the game, leaving the majority of the GDC trailer's Easter eggs behind. As the girl makes her reverse ascent in the trailer, we get a view of Benoit that seems somewhat familiar. The fountain and round parking area ahead resemble the actual entrance to the Royal Palms, and in a brief flash during the trailer's conclusion, we see Mom unloading the bags in an area easily found in the final game's hotel. Sadly, there's a giant fence where it appears the little girl touches down, and there's no indication of the spot on the final game's map. 
The trailer's ocean also appears to be on the opposite side of where it eventually ends up. The lighthouse in the distance is another important plot marker. It's the third mission-bearing refuge the player discovers, and the first they can fast travel to. The most soulful connection between the GDC trailer and the game Techland released is the father's use of an axe. Open world melee combat with zombies is essentially Dead Island's mission statement, and before he runs out of stamina, Dad manages to remove the arm of the bikini-clad zombie that eventually tackles his wife, demonstrating the game's limb removal system, hack at an enemy when they've been knocked down, a helpful strategy in the game, and lose the weapon in a zombie's neck, which could be referencing the game's use of projectiles or each weapon's limited durability. There's also the habit of discovering and quickly implementing everyday armaments that both this resourceful father and the game's protagonists seem to possess. Not to mention the speed and quantity of the zombie herds in both the trailer and game, which are conceivably equal. Perhaps the music is what makes the GDC trailer feel, at times, unlike the finished product. Composed by Giles Lamb, the somber instrumental piece is just a bit different than Dead Island's eventual opening anthem of Who Do You Voodoo Bitch by fictional rapper and playable character Sam B. Giles, who had written music for games and advertisements before, composed the three-minute theme specifically for the project's re-emergence at GDC. In an interview with T3.com, Giles said that, more often the music does a job of underpinning the visuals, creating impact, and often being very subliminal. Dead Island was the opposite. The music is the thing that locks you in, and the slow and deeply emotional music, contrasting with the brutal visuals, gives the film its power. It's rare for a game trailer to use emotional impact in this way. Shrunken head, broken legs, body parts on the concrete. Cut them up, put the stout potatoes in the swamp. Red light, even down, running like a track man. Scared of nobody, what your motherfuckers want. The problem is, Dead Island would prove to have very little emotional impact. NPCs in the final game were fairly generic, sometimes comical. There are no children anywhere on Benoit, despite the trailer ruffling the feathers of some parent groups who question the depiction of a child's death being used to sell a video game. A very thin connection can be drawn between the last shot of this trailer, a father reaching out to save his child, and the player hacking their way across the map to save anyone still alive. There's also a bunch of inconsistencies between the hotel room and the trailer and the final game. There are enough details inside to recognize it immediately, but it's surprising Techland left out so many details from such a popular piece of advertising. The axe is bright red in the trailer, but not in the game. The black luggage we see in the trailer is gone, along with the father's watch, a wooden piece of art on the wall, and the bar area in the back, which is replaced by a television stand. The mother ducks back into the kitchen to grab a knife, which would presumably be near her body, but is missing as well. The dad's shirt has the number 15 written on it in the trailer, but is blank in the game, and the lamps on the wall are a completely different style in both scenes. It's the infected! Run! Run for the storage room! The most glaring omission in the game, however, is the giant gaping hole in the window left when the girl was thrown from the room. The window is covered with blinds in the game, despite the player getting a gorgeous open view of the resort from a nearby balcony moments later. The hallway the girl runs down in the trailer is much less illuminated and less crowded with loot-filled suitcases, and the small hallway immediately to the right, where the dad grabs the axe, has been removed in an apparent remodel. In all fairness, the chairs are the same, the table is the same and is now overturned, and the dresser and a row of decorative pots are the same. The bathroom, which we don't get to see the inside of in the trailer, stays in the same location, and the two planks busted out of the door appear in the same area. There's also tiny, tragic handprints on the bed, a reminder of the third member of this doomed family that's no longer on the premises. The last detail that distances the trailer from Dead Island is the fact that this CG masterpiece wasn't included anywhere in the final game. It did not serve as Dead Island's opening and was not playable from anywhere on the game's disc. For some, connecting the trailer to the game so literally wasn't the point. In the Los Angeles Times, Malt Wagner, senior brand manager at the game's publisher Deep Silver, stated, The goal wasn't really to tell a story that was in the game, in terms of this triangle relationship between mother, father, and daughter. Rather, it was to have something reflective of the mood we want to create in the game. But if you look at it from a gamer's perspective, this could be one example of a quest you would encounter in Dead Island.
If you try and watch the trailer with fresh eyes, pretending you've never seen it before and have no idea how it will end, you can see how expertly the piece is directed. The viewer isn't given enough information to immediately recognize the girl is attacking her father. She could just be running to the first open door she sees. Their relationship isn't sealed until the trailer's final few shots that show the threesome arriving at the resort and waving for the camera. It's difficult to see these parents pick up their injured child and put her directly in harm's way, even though it just appears that way because the footage is reversed. Question remains, does this trailer sell the game Techland actually made? I could see the case argued both ways. The trailer makes too big a point of showing the axe in action for it to completely miss the mark, and I don't think anyone actually expected to play the final version backwards and forwards. But we never interact with these characters or learn any additional information about them from a diary, email, or side quest. Why was their inclusion so minimal? What's more important in a trailer, the game's story or the game's theme? Richard Scott, executive producer at Axis Animation, told Edge Magazine, We set out to create a trailer that would capture what it would be like to survive a zombie infestation. To me, this is clearly what the Dead Island game is about. Survival. This poor family may be very, very different from the four loudmouth leads in the final game, but all these characters are in the same position. They're stuck in the hotel when the epidemic breaks, forced to grab the first weapon they can find and defend themselves or die. I think Techland learned their lesson and made the trailer for their newest title, Dying Light, much more suggestive of the actual game, which I can personally verify after playing it at E3. Other trailers that seem to sell games other than the ones intended include the first cinematic trailer for Star Wars The Old Republic, the E3 2009 trailer for Brutal Legend, the announcement trailer for I Am Alive, and the first gameplay trailer for Red Steel. If you have any other suggestions on trailers that sell the wrong games, let me know in the comments below on GT or on my Twitter feed at GameTrailersVO. See you next time. Thank you.